Hello everybody, my name is Sepirex and welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to be recreating Boundary Rake in Mirror's Edge Catalyst. I apologize for some of the frame rates in this video. My computer was handling it fine on the highest settings, but when it started recording, it just went through the floor. Also, as I'm making this, I'm actually sick, so my voice might sound a little bit weird. But without further ado, uh, let's get into the video. So we've just been released from Juvie and now we're uh, looking at our grid link for some reason. I was experimenting with the camera and I managed to see this scene in a different angle. It's not that interesting, but uh, at this point I just got this camera working. So it was pretty exciting for me. Now we decided to see if there was anything behind the gate there you supposedly walked out of. There wasn't. While the camera was active, I restarted the game. And this weird thing happened. I was in juvie, but it was broad daylight. However, with this glitch I managed to see some of the effects that they did. All the rain is coming from the sky, but whenever there was a roof or anything like this, the rain was coming out of that object. After fixing that bug, I decided to see what was actually happening at the bus that you were supposedly going to get on before Icarus gets you out of Juvie. At this point, the wall goes black and you can't really see what's going on. What's actually happening is, these guards are actually carrying the victim inside of the bus. And when I actually looked to see what they were doing in there, you could see that the animation ended and they were all just models of people standing now. Of course I was gonna look at the cutscenes in third person. These cutscenes were actually made with motion capture so they look really they smooth and they're not as funny as well, the first game. Trust me. Here, take this. I wanna get off the streets. A beat link? But put it on. We need to get you connected and calibrated. I know no one's eager to talk to you. Reflection. Fighting scenes also looked a lot better. In this short clip Faith Head disappears. It's because the cutscene is viewed from a third person and they didn't want to get her face in the way. So they just removed it. Time for another cutscene. I'm kind of upset that they aren't as funny as they used to be, but I can understand. I'm here. It's a bit crowded with new guy and his ego. Knock it off, both of you. Look, we are out of options. The only way out is through the Everdyne Tower. And with Kasek there, you're gonna have to fight them. Icarus, upload the combat mod to face B Link. Alright, done. Good. Faith used the mod to freshen up your fighting I could also do some third person gameplay, but it wasn't as interesting because the animation just looked normal. I looked to see if the birds in the intro are actually 3D modeled, and yeah they are, even though they're such a far distance away. I really didn't expect that because they could have just used a 2D video, but yeah, I guess A plus for the effort. During the game you walk over these kind of transport tube thingies, and you could see people walking inside them, and I wondered where they actually go. This one was currently inactive, but you could basically tell that it just walked inside of the wall. I flew up to the train and you could see that something interesting was going on. You could see several layers of people inside the trains. However, when I took the camera inside of the train, there wasn't actually anything there. 
the way this effect is actually pulled off is that the people are actually a 2D texture that move relative to the player's view. This is what makes it look like it's 3D. And yet again, we see this technique being reused on the shops on the streets. I could take a closer look at the civilians inside their homes and see what they were talking about. You can clearly hear that it's just an automated, pre-recorded track, but it was pretty interesting to listen to anyway. Anyway, I ended up getting a new sculpture instead. I just love spending money on art. Attention. Supporting cultural endeavors. So, I invested in some art the other day. Got a couple of pieces from that artist you told me about. Should give a nice return in a few years when I pass them on. Yeah, I just love finding out about a hot artist before everyone else. Easiest money there is. So, I told him I'd back him up in the meeting. I took a closer look at some of the people on the roof. And they made these really weird poses. They were just there for the sake of having people on the roof. They don't talk or do anything else than just these weird movements. Also, you have like three character models for civilians in this game. And they're constantly being reused. So, I was heading over to Dogen. And while doing this, I found something really incredible. Dogen's restaurant was originally meant for the player to walk inside of. That means that if we take the camera through the door, we can see that the inside is actually completely modeled. It's really crazy that they ran through all this effort and it didn't actually put it in the game. And it's very clear that you were actually at some point meant to be inside of here. You can see that even the drawing is here. I headed over to Birdman to see if his house also had an interior. While there is no actual interior, there is this black box that has a few textures on it, so I think there was an intention for the player to go inside at some point, but they scrapped it really early and just left it in. So we're heading over to Elysium to do our first run. Let's see if there's anything interesting we can discover around here. If you play this game, you'll know that in Elysium, you hear Kruger and another scientist discussing about Kingdom. I went to see if they were actually inside of the elevator, and for obvious reasons, they were not. I sent a request three days ago, Mr. Kellogg. Excellent. This is your parameter, Mr. Anton. I'm sure you will go tomorrow. The board is following our progress with great interest, and I cannot overstate the importance of a successful launch. At this part, you're trying to grab some data, and while you're doing that, an Omnistat spy mm -hmm. actually climbs through this vent. I went to see where this Omnistat spy actually was before the cutscene starts. And it turns out he has his own personal little vent, which he comes out of. You can see he's actually not there until the point he's needed in the cutscene. Then he suddenly warps into place and uh, falls Good. through the vent, basically. I also wanted to look at the animation from a different angle and take a little closer look at this guy. Unfortunately, he's not used at other places in the game, which is actually kind of sad because this character model is really well made and it's actually pretty nice looking. No, there's someone else here. Does it look like a runner? We can also see where he goes after he opens up this door. Sorry, but I'm gonna check it out. Of course you are. He basically just disappears as soon as he's out of your view. After the cutscene in Elysium was done playing, I went back to see what was actually behind this closed door that Faith kicked shut, to see if the environment used in the cutscene was actually there. Uh, there was actually nothing there, which surprised me because I thought it would just be a regular game area. I flew up to one of these helicopter drone combo things to see if they have an interior or maybe a pilot or something. They do have actually have an interior, which really surprised me, but after thinking about it, they are used in several parts of the game where people actually jump out of these helicopter things. So that's probably the reason why it's there, because at some point the doors will open. I decided to see what happens to the KSEC guard after you grab the data. Alright, I got them. Time to... Show up! I told him the deal was off. You're forcing me to call for backup! The guy just showed up. Turns out he just keeps chilling in the hallway. I mean, dude, where'd you gotta call for backup or something? I need to call for backup. 
time to take a look at one of my favorite levels, the Anansi Tower level. During the level you can see several builders around. I went ahead and followed one of them to see where they go. As it turns out all they do is actually walk a pre-programmed path and walk in circles. Just to make it look like they're at work. I also found some workers that would only start working after a certain trigger was activated. Here's a different angle of the elevator that you go up in. I flew to the top of the tower before I got out of the elevator and you can see that the tower was already destroyed. Now I won't pretend to know why this was, but as soon as you got out of the elevator, the normal tower was loaded. I wanted to see what actually happens to the tuner mass damper while you let it fall. And what happens is the tuner falls for a while, disappears, and the model of the tower is swapped out with a destroyed one. You won't be able to tell this is happening because there is so much smoke. So this is actually a pretty smart trick by the developers to save on making an entire animation for the tower being destroyed. Hey, enjoy the view, but don't stick around. I expect Kruger Sackerson. Car on site for sore eyes, Faith. What happened here? Don't ask. And stay away from During the, the mission Flight Trap, Faith and Icarus talk about there being a lot of commotion in Kruger Sack. So let's see how much Kruger Sack there actually is. The results are pretty underwhelming. This is because developers couldn't be bothered actually placing Kruger Sack that would never be seen. So if they just put one Kruger Sack car into a small alleyway, it'll seem like there's a lot, but there actually doesn't have to be that much. During the dog's mission I actually wondered what Faith would look like if she was hanging from the side of the helicopter in third person. When I checked it out something really odd was happening where she actually wasn't attached at all and just kind of floating next to it and I don't understand why this was happening but it was pretty funny. For this next part I wanted to check out how high the surface stacks actually go. Just as they go amazingly high, it's actually kind of crazy. Priority switch now. I'm up. Diving in. Be ready to get out fast. Always am. Okay. I have access. Wow. Let me see. Prisoner data. There. Got it. And there. We're noticed. Get out. I wanted to explore a bit more of the subway part and. I'll just show you some random clips of some stuff I found. But while I was there, the Kruger AI actually noticed me. And instead of actually standing at a reasonable distance and shooting at me, they just stood in front of the wall that I was well, in, basically. And it looked really stupid. And I need someone to stay here and look out for my sister. Please, can you do that? Isabel Kruger is your sister. Yes. Yes, she is. Please, Icarus. I don't trust Rebecca. Bring him back. I will. All right. Thanks. See you in a bit. 
I was actually quite impressed with the kingdom level. It looked really good. With this camera I could take a closer look at how they did some of the effects and overall just how it looked. It was really fun to do. When you walk around in Kingdom, you can see some scientists working on, I don't know what, something like a human subject or something? Anyway, with this camera I could take a closer look. It was actually pretty creepy. Normally in spots like this you would walk straight forward, but at some places you can actually go to left or right and find some other kind of secret things. Just like this laboratory. You could hear these disturbing screams coming out of them, but when you look to see, there actually was no one there. There was this giant robotic arm moving cells with people in them around. I was kind of impressed by this and I wanted to take a closer look, so I did. As it turns out, these cells actually go on for a long time. You could also see a lean cell from here. It was very obvious that it was my lean cell because it was very brightly lit. However, when I took a closer look at Aline, she actually didn't appear to have any eyes and it looked really creepy. I could also see where Aline goes after you free her. Normally you don't get to see this at all. Unfortunately not that much actually happens, she just moves back for like a little bit and then just stands there. While you're running through Kingdom, you can see this live feed of Noah being tortured. And I wondered if he was actually being tortured at that very moment and if it actually was a life feed. And it turns out Noah isn't even in Kingdom at all. The only time you see him is in a cutscene and on that computer screen, so that was surprising. I wanted to look at the Malice Art Museum to see if there was actually any art. There was, but it was very poorly made. But hey, who am I to judge? If you watched my previous bound to remake of the original Mirror's Edge, you know that I checked out if the elevators actually went up. Are you in the main elevator? Let's do the same for this game and find out if elevators even move okay. at all. The short answer to that is yes. Good. Drones in third person look really weird. The same thing was happening with the helicopter drone combo thing. Faith was a test in first person, but in third person she was just kind of hovering next to it. According to the latest tally, almost half a million employees have already signed up for the train level. The way this level works is that Faith and the train are both standing still, and it's actually the tunnels that move around you. Because of this, the train can keep going on for as long as the developers want, without running out of space to ride on. During this short level, you could see the beautiful city out of the window. 
I was wondering if this was the same city you see all along and it turns out it's actually a very low quality model of the city with some extra added fog. It was pretty interesting to see because all the areas are here. They're just very low quality and have almost no texture. During the cat chasing level, cat, you could catch her sliding and jumping. I wondered what she was doing just before her animation starts playing, and it was pretty interesting because she was floating just above the building in a T-pose. I wanted to see if Cat was on the helicopter platform before the cutscene started playing, but since the cutscene was pre-rendered, she wasn't there. Now for the credits. I was actually quite surprised because I could even use the camera while it was in the credits. At first I was like where the hell am I? But as it turns out the credits is actually the entire city but it's just painted white. If you start to look a little bit more closely you can identify buildings and basically the whole city. This was really cool. This was my boundary break of Mirage Edge Catalyst. I hope you enjoyed because it was a lot of work to put together but also a lot of fun. I'd like to thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.